I suppose first and foremost, everybody has the power to save a life. And so that's the most powerful piece that we can teach not only our parents, our staff, but our kids. I think it's important because you're, everyone's going to be involved in a lot of stuff, whether you're in extracurriculars or not, but you're always going to have stress and you're going to need to know how to cope with that. And as you get older, you're going to get more involved with the things that you do. So just knowing how to be able to stay strong through it all is really important. So we have a suicide prevention training for all staff that's mandatory. So even before school starts, they're working on getting that done. And that just spreads awareness about suicide prevention, what to look for in students. Um, we also do some um, signs of suicide lessons. We call it SOS at the secondary level, which is just educating kids about um, things to look for and giving them opportunities to reach out to adults in the building for help. The crisis team consists of about 30 uh, staff members. Um, we have psychologists, social workers, counselors, and nurses who are all on that team. We're going to provide that support. We're going to let those students know that we're there to do um, individual or short-term short group counseling as well. Um, in addition, uh, we'll provide other resources. We really want to focus at this point, how are you going to go through this grieving process in a healthy manner? For East Hope Squad, I've been involved ever since I was a freshman. That was the first year that we've ever done this. Um, I've always been involved. I had a friend that was really struggling with mental health when I was in middle school. And so I was always passionate about talking about mental health and being a three-sport athlete. I've always known that it's super hard sometimes to get through some stuff. Uh, for the National Hope Squad Council, we're doing a lot of conferences. Right now we're preparing for a conference on September 29th, and we're split up into different groups. Each group will have 10 minutes to talk about how you can get more involved with suicide prevention, and my group is getting the community involved, so telling people around you how to cope differently. Yeah, it's really inspiring to me to try to make sure that everyone knows what we are, what we do, how we can help. We just really, you know, teach them that it's important not to keep a secret and this is a really serious matter. So if someone is talking to you about this, please let an adult know. So I think that's the really important piece of it is sometimes students are torn about if they should share this information or not. and. Um, and we really want them to know that it's important to reach out to an adult to keep someone safe and that it can take just a little, just a little reaching out could save a life. We encourage parents to talk to their children as much as they possibly can. Of course, we also say, listen, your child may come home and just want to share that information, may not necessarily want any comments, but after there may be a teachable moment where you can explain and share. It's super hard to cope with something sometimes. Uh, for me personally, I've always had a strong support system throughout my family and friends, but I know that not everyone has it at their home. And so learning how they can better themselves before trying to better others is super important because you have to put yourself before other people sometimes. Um, one really cool thing this year is the back of um, high school ID badges have a code to scan. Um, that will take students to lots of important resources, but one of them is 988, which is the new national suicide prevention number. I feel like sometimes people don't really know what resources are out there for them, but if resources are right in front of you and you can see it every single day, then you know that people are there for you and you can talk to anyone.